So we've heard Arrival mentioned a couple of times already this afternoon, which is, from my sense, incredibly reassuring to hear. But I'm aware that also for the past four or so years, we've been operating largely under the radar. Um, and so for those who don't know Arrival or who aren't familiar with us, we are an electric vehicle startup um, currently focusing on commercial vehicles. Although if you have been through our website, some of the BDRI may have noticed that we are also exploring a small car as well. Um, so we were founded in 2015 um, and really between 2015 and I would say 2019, we're operating in very much hardcore R&D world. So I joined the organization two years ago. At that point, I was employee number 386, uh, which felt very, very small compared to my Jaguar Land Rover days of probably employee number 9,722. Um, and today we're currently at 1500 employees, um, with most of those based in the UK. Unlike a lot of automotive companies, we also have our headquarters in West Kensington. And a huge part of that was trying to get um, sort of software talent from around the globe to work for us. And unfortunately, and I used to live in the Midlands, but the Midlands didn't quite cut it for a lot of our people from the Silicon Valley. So what are we doing? We're making commercial electric vehicles. And I have to admit, when I first joined the organization, I really didn't think I could ever be excited about a bus um, and definitely not excited about a van. However, I think particularly over the last year, we've shown that actually these vehicles are very integral to how people interact with space, how people interact with community and how actually people have access to goods and services at a reasonably low cost. So there have obviously this year been an absolute wealth of announcements around various electric vehicle startups. Um, and you could very easily put us into the same camp as the likes of Rivian and Canoe. So I just wanted to share a couple of reasons why we're doing things slightly differently. So our primary objective when we first established ourselves was to look at the current automotive industry and see why on earth electric vehicles are so expensive. And it's not really surprising that the majority of that cost comes from the fact that batteries uh, themselves represent a significant proportion of that cost. And the automotive industry, having existed for many decades, is in a pretty good place, or certainly for internal combustion engine vehicles. But it's kind of nonsensical to take an internal combustion engine vehicle and apply exactly the same techniques, but apply a battery you're then creating an electric vehicle which is optimized for a different powertrain. So we took the approach to say, well, if we have this completely blank sheet of paper, how can we re-engineer this vehicle such that we can achieve price parity with petrol and diesel equivalents? Um, and as I'm sure most people on this call are aware, the biggest barriers to electric vehicle adoption are of course cost um, and availability of charging infrastructure and range anxiety. And so from there, we sort of unlocked this kind of secret source, which we started to speak about a bit more publicly. So I guess isn't actually that secret anymore. Um, but it's essentially three ingredients. Number one is modular components. Um, so this means that all of our components are built in house, we're vertically integrated, and these slot together in kind of like a Tetris like formation. And the advantage of this is that each component is software enabled, we have a plug and play architecture and that means that we can really try as far as possible to increase the um, usable life of the vehicles. The second aspect is that we've developed our own um, panel materials. So these panels here and the vehicles are not steel or aluminium, uh, but they're an in-house developed um, composite. The composite itself actually starts as sort of a fabric before going through various treatment processes. Not only is this incredibly light, but it's incredibly durable, and it means that we can replace panels uh, very, very quickly, which represents a huge headache for a large number of logistics and, um, uh, and bus companies. And the third aspect, and I think possibly the most interesting aspect, um, or certainly I think so, is our method of manufacture. Um, on the screen here is one of our robotic cells in our R&D facility in Banbury. And essentially these robotic cells within a factory, there are 20 of them. Um, and that takes up a space which is around an 80th, I think, 
of the Castle Bromwich site for Jaguar Land Rover. And this is where our vehicles are built and assembled. And the reason that they can be assembled in this manner is that we've designed for robofacturing, which I can tell you is a made up phrase, but manufacturing by robots. And we've designed for that from inception. And so together from the software enabled components, modular plug and play, uh, this um, platform architecture and these lightweight materials, we're able to manufacture on a very, very small footprint and importantly, pretty much anywhere in the world so that we can locate these factories close to um, our end customer without the requirement to um, ship empty space, which is hugely ineffective. But I think what is fascinating, and I'm just going to do a quick time check because I know I can talk about this forever, um, is that we are a startup and I think startups can quite often be called upstarts which isn't a particularly flattering term, I don't think. And I also think that the comment that Johanna said around falling in love with our own technology is sort of perfectly captures how people could see the startup community. And I think through this, we have to be incredibly humble to the fact that we're sitting on decades of automotive experience that we need to be mindful of and to sort of take on board. And secondly, that our customers don't necessarily want to have our all singing, all dancing um, software solutions and technology that can eliminate people out of processes and make things incredibly efficient. And that's where the role of experience team um, comes into it. Um, the experience team is an annoying name because it's one of those ones that my dad certainly thinks is a made up job title. But essentially, it means looking at the entire end to end spectrum of a product. So right from the moment that you hear about a product through to the end of the vehicle's life and every single interaction moment in between them. So within that team, we work extensively with um, logistics operators. Our team has spent hours and hours and hours within depots, on the road with, um, with DPD drivers, UPS drivers, Royal Mail drivers, um, and also sat with bus drivers as well. We also sort of design very much with inclusivity uh, front and center of our minds. So recognizing that we are having this shift away from um, people traveling to things to things traveling towards us. So actually, if you are someone with reduced mobility, how intimidating is it for you to receive a, prod um, a parcel with someone knocking on the door? And if you take some time to get to the door, does the driver drive off? Um, and how does that make you feel as someone who is, has reduced mobility? But I think the thing that ties it all together is that how, when we occupy so much physical space in the real world, how do we then see our customers, not just as our direct customers and drivers, but also cities and work within the urban environment? So a big part of my job is understanding what is it that is on the Greater London Authority's roadmap or TfL's roadmap? What are the specific use cases that they require from our data and how can we work with them to enable our vehicles to reach those strategic objectives? So things from enabling active mobility uh, to healthier streets, designing our own charging infrastructure in a way that is consistent with healthier streets design principles um, set out by the Greater London Authority, tackling social isolation and um, social participation. Um, and just ensuring that we're fundamentally being a nice presence and work towards reducing private car ownership. Um, and I think in that sense, hopefully we can shift away from being sort of very, whilst we are sort of tech first and tech enabled, but being at our core an incredibly human brand and a brand that people want to have uh, roaming around their streets and delivering their goods. Um, so I'll leave it there because I can see that there are a number of questions.